In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your GoPro Hero 12 Black to capture the absolute best quality underwater footage you possibly can get. And that is gonna involve using some red filters to color correct for the loss of red light we get underwater. But first, let's start with setting up the GoPro itself. So first, we're gonna head back to the settings. We're gonna click on that first one. You can use activity, click into that, and we are gonna be shooting at 4K resolution. Right now, frames per second, we're just gonna leave it at 30 frames. That's gonna be regular motion, not slow motion. Uh, lens, I like to use a wide lens down there. Hyper smooth, we're gonna leave on because oftentimes if this is handheld underwater, it's gonna be a little bit shaky and that hyper smooth really helps everything look really nice and fluid underwater. And then the only other thing we're gonna turn on under ProTune is 10-bit color. We're gonna make sure that that is on so that captures the absolute most color detail you possibly can. And same with bit rate. Make sure your bit rate is on high for that 120 megabit per second capture. Uh, shutter speed, go ahead and leave on auto for underwater. Uh, you're not gonna really wanna mess with that. White balance also on auto. We're gonna let the white balance take care of all the color temperature changes. And then also when you add a red filter, the white balance does a really good job of using that red filter to its advantage. ISO minimum 100, 16 max, perfect. Sharpness, I like to have that medium. Color, I also like to have it natural just so I can use it, push it a little bit in post if I need to. Um, you can do it in vivid if you don't like to, uh, or vibrant if you don't like to color grade, but natural is a pretty good flat one to start with. And that's it. So that we're all set up here. Now on this next screen, when you're actually shooting, there's just one thing I wanna go over, and that's the 1X setting. That's gonna be just your regular speed motion. Now, if you have really shaky hands, um, 2x slow motion might be for you. That's gonna allow you to capture even slower and make it look a lot more fluid and smooth underwater. And what this is also good for is sea life. So sea life oftentimes likes to move around really quickly and it's really hard to capture sometimes. You might only get like a one second shot of that angel fish kind of cruising by or a half second shot of that angel fish cruising by until it's not usable anymore. But if you're in 2X slow-mo or even 4X slow-mo, you can take that half second clip and turn it into at least a two second clip with 4X slow-mo, kind of building your video and building your story a little bit better because those little critters underwater can be very, very fast sometimes. Now let's talk about the red filters. So all your settings are locked, you're ready to shoot. Um, the red filters that we make are only gonna work in the protective housing. So if you're shooting like this, it's not gonna work. And actually in this last video that I was shooting, um, I was just hand holding it like this because I didn't have the protective housing. Bad Jeff. But uh, the protective housing, you just slide these things on and it works well. But in a pinch too, you can just hold it in front um, and shoot around and that works really well. It's just a little bit hard because both of your hands are uh, in use and not able to do anything with this hand. So these will install perfectly on the protective housing as this camera goes into the protective housing and this slides over. And that housing also makes it waterproof way deeper than just the camera itself. So it's always a good idea to use it. I was just snorkeling and only going down to like 10, 15 feet. So the camera is perfectly fine doing that. And there's three different levels of color. We've got a snorkel, which is a light red, a red, which is a darker red, and a magenta, which is kind of a purple. These are just for different lighting conditions and color, water colors. The snorkel's really good for when it's like very bright and sunny in shallow waters. It's just a little bit of red. That's gonna help color compensate for that loss of red light underwater. The red, which is pretty much what I use most of the time, like you can see in this video here, it was very cloudy out, so there wasn't a lot of available light. The water was still very clear, but I just used the red, and now this was working perfectly fine in like five to 10 feet of water. And then there's the magenta, which is gonna be for green water. That's like your California coast, that type of green water. It just color corrects a little bit differently than the reds, which are for that like blue tropical Hawaii Fiji water that you often wanna be diving in. So as you can see in the video comparisons here, I'm diving down. Uh, without the filters, the water's really green, kind of bluish green. And that's just because there's no red light. The camera doesn't know that there's no red light in front of it, so the white balance is kind of thinking there's nothing there. So it's looking very green and very blue, where the second I put this red filter on, red is actually reducing all of the other colors other than red. So it's kind of fake color balancing this white balance 
to shoot exactly how we see them underwater and kind of bringing back those reds into the picture. So you can see with the filter on, you're getting these vibrant, rich tropical colors with a little bit more red in it than without the filter. It's very green and kind of blue washed. So another tip of just shooting underwater in general to capture the best colors, the camera doesn't do too well if you're shooting just into open space like you can see here. Like it's not really locked into anything other than the water, like far, far away reefs, but everything's gonna come out pretty green or pretty blue because the camera's white balance isn't really locking onto anything. It's kind of just locking onto the, the water. So the best way to capture really cool colors and just better framing in general is to get a piece of the coral or the ground in frame. And that's gonna allow the camera's white balance to really lock onto it and capture vibrant colors. Stuff that looks really, really good when you're posting it onto Instagram or using it on your videos about your dive or your snorkel. So that would be my number one tip for shooting underwater is one, make sure you're kind of locking on and have a close range subject like a reef or even a big fish. And that's gonna allow the camera to really adjust for color better than shooting like deep into the abyss where everything's gonna come, come out really blue and really green and pretty much impossible to color grade. Other than that, the only other tip I have for you is kind of a snorkel tip or a dive tip. Obviously, the slower you move, the more comfortable that the fish and sea life are usually gonna be around you. So don't be charging at fish underwater, just kind of be one with the water, one with the ocean, move really, really slow. Slow camera movements look way better than fast camera movements underwater anyway. So just get comfortable under there, move slow, and capture some epic underwater shots. If you have any other questions, drop them in the comment below. Happy to answer them. See you on the next one.